You are now listening to the Highly Evolved Podcast with your host, Safan. Transmission will commence momentarily. Hello, guys. Welcome to the Highly Evolved Podcast. My name is Safan. You can find me on Twitter and gab.ai. Let's start the show. In this episode, this, this is a clip I want to share you guys with um, Laura Ingram. Um, interviewed the former executive at, at the ACLU. Michael Myers, Michael Myers, and what he had to say about the, what's going on last week about Al Sharpton race baiting organization, the National Action Network, race baiting Al Sharpton. All right, let's play this. At at the, I'm trying to avoid the risk of copyright strikes. I'm just gonna play the audio, and if you guys want to watch the video, I'll li- leave the link below. But let's just listen to it right now. Well, the 2020 Democratic uh, fanatics have renewed their calls for reparations while kissing the ring of the Reverend Al at the National Action Network convention this week. Would you sign the bill for reparations? Yes, I would. I already support that bill. Who's the president? Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely, I would sign that into law. All these Democrat leaders are agreeing to this ridiculousness. Look, nothing but Democrats. How come these Democrats? There are things that we need to do in this country that have been a long time in coming. One of those is to move forward with reparations. Here now. Okay, I just want to pause it right there for a second. Why are these Democrats going here and they never go to any conservative? Like, if you want to win the nomination, not the nomination, but America, shouldn't you be going to other platforms as well, not just these liberal platforms? I don't understand this. What, to buy, to, 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 um, bid for votes? These people, these Democrats are so stupid. They're so transparent. You can see right through them. But let's carry on with the video, all right? I'm trying to not interrupt us from, from here on. Let's watch. Let's listen. Oh, is Michael Myers, former ACLU national board member. Now, Michael, you say that this is all a scam, explain. Of course it is. It's, um, it's more that blame whitey movement, mania, madness, and it is sheer racial rhetoric. And that's what you get at the Al Sharpton so-called House of Justice. Uh, you have buffoonery, and you have diversion, you have distraction, you have this notion of farce. So at that House of so-called justice, you have either a, a a horror picture show showing, or you have a, sh- a farce. Either way, it is not to be taken seriously. I can't understand how serious presidential contenders can give legitimacy to a racial blowhard. And I think it is outrageous and silly and idiocy on the part of the presidential candidates. And anybody who thinks that white Americans are going to take the blame or going to feel guilty or give their land and their property away in some sort of reparations pot because they feel responsibility for the sins of their forebears. They're not. um, Al Sharpton uh, was also uh, trying to address the improvements in the uh, the economic standing of African Americans just in the last two years, and he dismissed it. Let's watch. Blacks are still doubly unemployed to whites. You know, Trump keeps saying it's the lowest black unemployment ever was. Yeah, but we're still double the whites. How do you close the race gap? How do you close the race gap in wealth? So it doesn't mean Trump could literally (laughs) cure cancer tomorrow when Al Sharpton said, yeah, but he should have done it, you know, a year ago. I I, I can't, I cannot take Al Sharpton seriously. The whole racial movement is anti-intellectual. It's unintelligent. So I can't take but, but what about the, all, the, oh, all the 2020 candidates? I mean, one well, after the other just prostrated themselves to kiss, Al Sharpton. Kissing his ring, kissing his butt. I just don't get it. If they want to be serious, they should take Al Sharpton and say, no, there's not going to be any reparations. There's not going to be any steadier reparations. Where is this reparations pot coming from? James Foreman in 1969, he went to the Riverside Church and said, we want 500 million, that's all, 500 million dollars in the reparation pot, and they want it from the white churches and the white synagogues. Well, where did that money go to? It didn't go to black people or the, or the descendants of African slaves. You know where that money goes, goes to. It goes to 
to people who are hustlers, who are pimps. And I resent it, and I think it's shameless, and it's racial idiocy, and people who have sense, who are intelligent, must address this as such. Well, I think it, I mean, I mean, I heard a lot of people today were saying what they're doing is racist because you're actually saying the guy who just came here from uh, Serbia six months ago yeah. somehow is going to have to write a check for a Somali <laughs> refugee who came here 20 years ago. I mean, none of that makes any sense it, to most it, people. That's why I say it's unintelligent. Nobody's giving up their house. Nobody's giving up their land. Nobody's giving away acres. The 40 acres are gone. And, and nobody, not even a building is going into that in that reparations pot. So what are they talking about? The, the, these, these people, a, you know, they are chasing farce. It's a campaign issue. This is just, this is all a power it's a grab. It's, yeah. it's, it's a total distraction. It's we're going to have you back, it's Michael, buffoonery. to talk about what the, yeah, we're going to have you back <laughs> to talk about what the ACLU is doing, uh, today's ACLU mm. doing in lawsuits. We're gonna, we didn't have time to do it in this segment. We will have you back because it's fascinating. Well, the 2020. You see, guys? Even the executive, former executive of the ACLU is bashing this down. And the ACLU is the most liberal things out there, right? Even he can recognize how buffoonery this is, right? So basically, a guy from, say, like, a guy from another country just migrated over here. Now he got to pay reparation for a guy that he never met, that he never got nothing involved with slavery. Now they got to pay reparation to this. And who's paying the reparations? It's coming out of tax of money? This is ridiculous. It shows you how stupid and uneducated the idea is. It's uninformed ideas, it's reparations, all right? And these candidates, these presidential candidates just come out and support it without thinking. It's clearly a smoke screen. They said it's clearly a smoke screen. Pattering to the people, right? Try to get money for this. I mean, try to get their votes, buying their votes. That's what it is. Give me your votes. I'll give you reparations. I'll give you money. <laughs> This basically what it is, is buffoonery, and you got this is not a smart conversation they're having. The the Democrats they're not having a smart debate. They're not thinking logically here. Like it's not feasible to to implement reparations, right? They're just playing the people. And when they're getting all this money, Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, they're the biggest race baiters. Black people, I don't want to tell you what to do, but you need to stop listening to Al Sharpton and Reggie Jack I mean J Jesse Jackson, right? And for your awareness, right? I'm a conspiracy analyst, right? There's there's allegedly that Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson have something connected to MLK death, right? That's allegedly, right? How come? You know who you know who told MLK to come out in the balcony? Jesse Jackson. He he pushing him. He keep pushing, keep telling him, hey, it's a beautiful day, come over. So there's an allegation that either ja Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson have something to do with, it. allegedly, all right? Let me say, use the word allegedly, all right? With MLK death. That's for people that's unaware. People don't, don't know that, all right? But let me get back to reparations, all right? It's an unintelligent conversation they're doing. They're pattering to people who don't, don't have, that, that's not smart enough to, cons to comprehend the consequences, comprehend the ramification of we if we do implement it, um, reparations right so I I'm I'm Asian right do I have to pay reparation to these people or am I'm getting reparation huh who's who's entitled to reparation reparation huh does black how you do how do you determine by their DNA because most blacks are are Indian as well right there's, there's all kind of complex issue here. What, just because of your skin tone, you're entitled to reparation? It doesn't make sense, guys. It does not make sense. It's a reparation idea. It's not feasible. And all the candidates who's going up there, Christian Gillibrand, Julio Castro, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, uh, who else? Elizabeth Warren, right? And who else? Some other jokes? That you should not take these people seriously. They are, they are so stupid, all right? They're so used to Andy Yang. Andy Yang's not. Well, Andy Yang's basically give everybody reparation, right? Universal basic income. That's kind of a reparation as well, right? Don't don't even vote for Andrew Andrew Yang. He's a he's an idiot as well. He's stupid for an entrepreneur. And you're an Asian. Why would you be a Democrat? I don't understand that. Asian Democrat. That's like a unit. That's nothing. That doesn't. It shouldn't exist at all, right? I don't say he's a unicorn. That's insulting to unicorns, right? Andrew Yang. 
Hell, I'm Asian. Look, look, look. I'm Asian. I don't trust other Asian, right? I don't vote for other Asian. Right? When it comes to election, I don't vote for other Asian. Because I know how they are. I know how corrupt they are. Andrew Yang, he's another corrupt individual. Right? He's just another corrupt individual. Don't vote for any Asian people, right? Just because you're Asian, just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I have to vote for other Asian. It's like it's like saying it's just because you're black, you have to vote for black people. That's not that's not a rule. That's not set in stone at all. I, I'm voting for people under policy, and the, right now the Democrat got stupid policy. Let's let's say what it really is. It's dumb policy, right? Policy that don't make sense. Policy that make people poor. Policy that oppress people. Policy that don't give people opportunity to rise above anything else, right? These policies are so dangerous and detrimental to American society, right? This policy. It costs irreversible reprehensible damages to Amer to, to a fabric of American society. And now they want reparations. And these people who want reparations, they're low IQ, don't know, don't know politics, don't know economics, don't know any of these stuff. And they want reparations. Good luck, man. Good luck getting into the, the Senate. Well, Cong Congress is run by the stupid Democrats. But good luck passing, getting to the Senate. Good luck getting to Donald Trump. Right? Veto, not pass. It won't even get to veto. It just won't pass. That's it. Stupid. It's like the Green New Deal. It's retarded. They put, like, the Democrats supported the Green New Deal and reparation. What else? And universal income. Highly unpopular ideas. And they report support it. Why would you support highly unpopular ideas? I don't understand that. And these ideas, and these ideas that they're promoting are, are governmental control. Everything, big government, big government, big, big, big government. Democrats love big government, right? Look at big government, DMV. That's big government. Look how faulty it is, right? Look at, look at um, the post office. That's big government. Look how it's almost running out of business, right? What's another big government? Look at how long the IRS is. You go wait in line just to talk to the IRS. That's big government, right? Look how, look how underfunded the police department. Look how underfunded the fire department is. That's government, right? People, people want to use this this logic that we have. We already have a socialist program. We already have a socialist program. We already live in a socialist program, right? And look how dysfunctional it is, right? The road that they, they, they want to use, like, oh, the road is already under a, a, a socialist program. We pay our taxes into it. And look how long it takes to fix the road. Take years to fix the road. Why, right? if you if you hired a private company, they'll fix it faster, right? Look how mismanaged it is, right? They want to say. They want to say, um, what's another thing? What's another government-funded BS that they keep using? Healthcare, right? Look at Canada healthcare. Yeah, wait in line for surgery, right? It doesn't make sense. Anything big, government is terrible, right? Look, okay, look at the look at Social Security. They say, oh, we already have Social Security. We already we have we already, we already have Social Security program. Look at Social Security. It's about to be bankrupt, right? Look how well that worked out. People, people, these these antifas, these liberal, they like to say, "Oh, we already have social security program. Why not just expand Medicare? Why not? Uh, Medicare is about to be broken, all right? <laughs> Medicare, Medicaid, they they're about to lose their funding. They don't. They're about to go bankrupt, all right? You idiots, all right? If you want to expand Medicare for everyone, the country about to go broke. We are in twenty two trillion dollars in debt, all right? It don't make any sense." Yes, we do have these social nexus. Yes, let me say it over for you guys who who can't comprehend what I'm talking about. Yes, we do have these socialistic programs out there like Social Security, Medicaid, DMV, police, and fire department. And look where it's at right now at that point. Where is is at a breaking point? It's about to go bankrupt. There's no funding for it. Right? It's inefficient. We have these socialistic program, but it's inefficient. See what the socialistic gets you? All right? It's not working right now. And they still want to perpetuate socialism, socialist mentality, right? And reparation is not working, right? How many times I have to tell you this? I bet you I have to tell you multiple times when people understand this. But um, I'm, I'm building up my heat. Right? I'm, I, it's time for me to end this video. All right, guys? Let me know what you think. Are black people entitled to reparation? Will it break the system? Right? Will it break the system? How is that fair for everyone else who, who got nothing, nothing to do with slavery, right? We we wasn't most people wasn't even born that time. The people who were born that time are dead already, and you think it's fair for them to pay reparations? And some of these people, white people, are not in, most white people are not are not rich, right? They live in 
they they're dis- as disadvantaged as black people as well. All right? All these I all these myth white privileges. I know some poor white people, all right? Where's their privileges? But anyway, guys, let me know what you think. If you want to support me, I'm doing this for the hell of it because I love it so much. I'm not getting monetized. I'm not getting paid by YouTube. What you can do is...